How's it going everyone and welcome back to LT 3D. So recently I got my hands on FlashForge's latest 3D printer, the FlashForge 85X, which is also their first four color 3D printer. Uh, and today I'm pretty much just gonna go over my first experience with the machine, uh, essentially my first 24 hours with it. Uh, briefly touch on print quality, uh, cause I'll have a dedicated video coming out pretty much maybe a week or two after this video. Um, and then also talk about some things I like and some dislikes if I pretty much have any. So uh, without further ado, it's enough of me waffling. Let's get into it. So first thing, it looks pretty much almost identical to the Adventure 5M, apart from the four spools on the side and the, uh, the IFS. And to be honest, I really liked the design of the 85M. It's very inspired by the Bamboo Lab POS. But um, nonetheless, I, I think it's a fantastic design. I still don't see why they um, couldn't make a sort of backwards compatible kit, like an upgrade for the 5M to 5X, because I mean, it's pretty much, like I said, just an IFS on the side, four spool holders, new print head with a cutter in it. But anyway, let's let's not get into that. I'll, I'll, I'll rant for like 20 minutes. Man. The interface is pretty much the exact same as the 85M. So everything is pretty much in the same spots. So if you're familiar with the 5M or you have a 5M Pro, you're pretty much going to know exactly what you're in for and be able to get up and running in minutes. Uh, one thing I haven't been able to find is how to turn off the sound, like the startup sound. Uh, it was really easy to find on the 5M. Cannot find it for the life of me on the 5X. So if any of you guys have a 5X out there and you know where that setting is, if you could let me know, that would be fantastic because sometimes I'm filming like late at night like I am now, it's like almost midnight and my family's asleep. And every time I turn that printer on, and um, yeah, it, I'm worried it's gonna wake them up. So um, if you have that, please drop it in the comments down below. The next cool thing, and the thing that I really like as well, is that the build plate actually works this time. Now, when I say actually works, I mean things stick to it. So with the 5M, I had a lot of issues getting pretty much any print to stick on there at the beginning, like way off in the beginning. I know that had a lot of sort of Z offset issues with firmware and so forth, but it was just, it was very frustrating for getting the printer out of the box, you know, maybe get a couple of prints out working fine. And then after that, you do a firmware update, re-level the bed, nothing but issues, nothing sticking at all. So I ended up buying a BQ cryo grip plate, that was called. Yep, that's what it's called, cry grip plate. I'll put a picture, I'll hold it or something. Um, and I, I use that religiously on that printer. It works perfectly, love their plates. I have two for the Bamboo Lab series. Anyway, that's, I've gone off on a tangent, but you should, you should get one if you're interested. Link in the comments, helps out the channel. Appreciate it. Um, anyway, so when I got this one, I was a little bit skeptical as to whether we're gonna have the same issues. Now. Good news is, for all the prints I've done so far, no issues whatsoever, which is awesome to see. And I, I can't wait to print a lot more on it and with other materials to see if, you know, we have these serious, like these similar issues. I know I had some issues with PTG on the um, 85M, so I'll, um, I'll definitely print some PTG on this and see if I have the same issues. But so far, it's looking so good. Next thing, which I think is a fantastic upgrade, and I think every 3D printing manufacturer needs to do this, uh, is have a magnetic or pogo pin extruder head front cover. Uh, the, the 5X simply just pops off, has a little pogo connector at the top, and you don't have to worry about wires or unclipping um, fan cables and so forth. So let's just say, for example, it did somehow come off during a print, you at least know that it's not going to rip out a fan cable damage a fan, you have to go buy a new fan or so forth. It just comes off, no issues, no damage. Fantastic flash forge, love it. Would love to see like an upgrade for the 5M or something similar to that. I know it's not gonna happen, but just for every other model you release, please do this, I freaking love it. I'm also a really big fan of the new nozzle slash hot end design on the AD5X. Uh, at first, I thought it was gonna be very similar to the uh, Bamboo Lab A1 series where it was just, you know, a full hot end that you just flip a clip off, take it out. Uh, on close inspection, it's not. Um, simply, you have the uh, silicon sock, which you take off. You've then got a little clip similar to the uh, A1 series, but then obviously, which I forgot, uh, they have the magnetic heat sink, which you just 
flick open and then you can just pull the nozzle out. Now, it's very easy to swap out the nozzles. The nozzles are also very small. It is significantly smaller than the 5M series, which I love because I do think those 5M series nozzles were quite big. And because they were quite big, uh, that also meant it had a big price point. Uh, I think Australian, it was like $55, $60 for the nozzle. Uh, but now these ones are significantly cheaper. I don't know exactly what the Australian pricing is, um, I know that they've just been added to the FlashForge US store. So I'll track a price conversion up on the screen uh, in post. So it is cheaper uh, and they are fantastic. Uh, just quick note, there are two different uh, nozzle designs. There's the original one, which doesn't have this sort of brass or copper, whatever it is, a um, little bit above the actual nozzle. Um, the new ones, the new 85Xs come with these ones. The old ones come with just the normal nozzle without it. Um, the new nozzles do not fit on the old 85X because the magnetic heat sink doesn't have space for them. Um, I have seen though, however, someone in the FlashForge uh, official Facebook group did order a nozzle, got a new one, and it came with a new magnetic heat sink that supported it. So I don't know if that's going to be for all new nozzles. I might have to reach out and try and confirm that with them. But if so, then that is fantastic. It means that you can just hot swap from an old nozzle to a new nozzle. I'm not actually sure what the reasoning is for this. I might do a little bit of research. If I find the answer for it while I'm editing the video, I'll, um, I'll chuck it up now on the screen. The IFS system so far, I don't mind it. it reminds me a lot of like the uh, Bamboo Lab A A1 with the AMS light. Um, obviously, it takes up way less space than the AMS light, which is a big plus in my books, and I think for a lot of people. Um, I do have one little issue with it at the moment. Uh, my third slot, I don't know if it's the filament I'm currently using. I've got a um, PLA multicolor sky dive, I believe, from Flashforge on it, and. When I tried to load it in, it didn't grab it and feed it through properly. It just grabbed it a little bit, fed it up like a couple centimeters and that's it. It didn't actually feed it all the way through the tubes. So I don't know if that's just an issue with my IFS, if that's a known issue. Don't know if it's the filaments. I'm going to chuck a bunch of other filaments through it to see if I can replicate the issue. But I've had it twice now with that specific spool. So it could just be that spool. Another thing that I like that a lot of people will probably overlook is the actual spool holders. I know initially uh, when they first had images come out and renders, they had these black, small, very thin, finicky looking spool holders. But on this new release, they have these nice gray ones, which are reminiscent of the um, AMS light spool holders, which are fantastic. I love the AMS light ones because it allows you to use multiple different spool diameters, uh, generic, brands and so forth, third party brands, uh, and know that it's all going to still fit on there and you don't have to, you know, mod it like you did with uh, the original AMS. Like if you wanted to chuck a 500 gram spool in there, it didn't work very well. You had to, you know, print attachments for it. Whereas on this, you can chuck a 500 gram spool, 600 gram spool, 750 gram spool, a kilo, whatever in between, whatever brand, and you should be fine. It loads, unloads the filament quite nicely. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's a very overlooked feature, but I very much like it. Probably the only big downside or dislike I really have right now is the uh, the perch at the back. Not that there's anything wrong, like it's getting stuck. I know that it was like delayed heavily for like, I think what, I think it was delayed eight months or something because they had issues with the perch shoot. And I know there was like, TPU getting stuck there. I know, I think they also probably had some PLA getting stuck there. Um, I've had no issues with filament getting stuck or clogging up the perch chute, which is great, but it is so loud every time it goes to purge. It is very loud whenever it changes color. Like I'm up the other end of the house, I can still hear it go ping every time it purges. So maybe they can, lower the speed or something or the force that it hits it with or i don't know it'd be nice if you could dampen that somehow in an update or maybe i just need to put some foam or some felt over it so that we don't have that issue but um yeah it's just it's, it's pretty much my only dislike and the fact that 
no, my, my third IFS slot is acting up a little bit. But apart from that, solid 24 hours of the printer, done a couple prints. I might just show a couple now, B-roll. I'm quite happy with it so far. Um, like I said, I'm working on a print quality video uh, where I'll be going over um, pretty much, I'll be printing everything preloaded on the printer. I'll be printing some benchmark sort of prints, like obviously a Benchy, a Bodhi. I'll be doing like an all-in-one 3D printing test. I might even do the um, the toaster test. Um, I can't remember what it's called. If I, I'll, I'll, I'll link it all in that future video. Um, but that's pretty much it. Overall, it's, it's, it's pretty good pretty thumbs up um, I think it's definitely attractive obviously the 220 build plate not the biggest but if you're a beginner and you look for multicolor it's a fantastic price point it's a good build size I think you'd be great um, let me know in the comments what other sort of things you want me to print on this I'm planning on doing a bunch of videos like multi-material you know PLA PETG maybe do some multi-material with TPU um, doing a full multicolor walkthrough how to slice uh, multicolor files for it uh, I've got a lot planned for this apologies if it takes a while to get out I've got uh, a um, newborn I think should, well not newborn anymore it's been about eight weeks so um, it keeps it keeps me busy and a little bit away from content. So I'll try and post more regularly in the future. Um, let me know as well if you enjoyed this sort of more vloggy slash sort of just unscripted, straight off the top improv like videos, because I'd be very interested to see your thoughts on that because I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I'm trying it, it's new. I don't usually do it, mine are all scripted. So I, I would love your feedback on that. Um, enjoyed it, don't forget to like, subscribe. And as always, happy printing.